it's Steven from Shelley, and today we're talking about watches. We're going to do a 6K showdown, so three watches that are all near the $6,000 price point. Quick asterisk there, the most expensive being $65.50. Three brands represented here. We have Grand Seiko, Omega, and Rolex. Before we dive into those three watches, quick wrist check. We have my Swatch System 51. This is the Hodinkee Generation 1986 version. Check out the videos on that watch as well. Okay, let's dive in. Up first at 5800 is the Grand Seiko Heritage Collection Spring Drive. The version we've picked is the white dial, commonly referred to as the Snowflake. Let's start there. So the Snowflake is a fan favorite. That's a name not the brand came up with, but fans of the watch refer to it as a Snowflake. This white dial is incredible. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. Seeing this watch in person is worth 20,000 my words. This textured white dial is a piece of art. Definitely see them in person. It's really beautiful. While we're on the topic of finish, the hands and hour markers are finished incredibly in this watch. They use like a diamond coated tool to cut these things. The finish is impeccable. And watch aficionados have compared the hands under microscopes to the likes of like Patek Philippe. And at a $5,800 watch, yes, it's expensive, but in terms of finish on things like the dial and the hand, it really holds up to really, really high end watches at much higher price points. So in terms of fit and finish, it is a really great value. In terms of the movement, it is a spring drive. So without getting too complicated or technical, a spring drive is more or less like a hybrid type of movement. So it's still mechanically wound. It's an automatic movement that winds with the motion of your wrist, but it has a quartz oscillator. And the result is a highly, highly accurate watch. So it's rated by them at a plus or minus one second per day. Although multiple people have tested this watch and got it to be even more accurate than that. It's a truly highly accurate watch. Some may say it's cheating because it's using quartz, but it's really also using mechanical windings. So I just see it as a really cool movement. Um, I don't see it as cheating. I just see it as innovative and a great watch. The other thing with a spring drive is with the quartz oscillator, you get this sweeping smooth second hand versus ticking. It's just really cool to look at. And also I didn't mention the second hand. It's a blued steel, which is really beautiful. Again, the, just the dial and the hands of this watch are beautiful. Also, it does have a cool, um, indicator on the front, front so you can see how um, wound the watch is and how much uh, power is left, so a power reserve meter, and it does have a nicely executed date display at three o'clock as well. So we talked about the fit and finish of the watch, but the material we haven't touched on, it's actually a titanium case and bracelet, so it's really light as well. So you pick this thing up, you start looking at it, it looks great, it feels light, it's, it's just, you have to see this watch. The finish and the materials on it are crazy. So. Um, they say it's 30% lighter than steel watches when you wear it. It honestly feels like it's 50% lighter than most steel watches around the same size. Speaking of, it is a 41 millimeter, so very wearable every day. So to sum up this watch, it's, it has an amazing finish, an incredible movement, super accuracy. But I say the one thing that it's lacking is just its overall personality. So everything's ex executed perfectly on it, but it's really focused on precision and finish. And there's just something missing about it overall, although it is a technically great watch, beautiful to look at, and I really, really love it. Our next watch requires little introduction. It's the Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch Professional Chronograph, the first watch worn on the moon. So it's a very historic watch and highly collectible. These modern watches have remained relatively unchanged since the originals, and I've just been, check out Speedy Tuesday hashtag, people love these things. So anyways, before we get into the price of the watch, we need to talk about the two versions. The first being the Hesselite crystal version. So the Hesselite was actually used in space because it was more conducive to the pressures of space travel, less likely to crack or burst on the watch. However, the major downside being these watches are a lot more prone to scratching. That model is 5,350 on the steel bracelet. The bad news is the next model up is an entire thousand dollars more. The Sapphire Crystal version is $6,350. Uh, they often call this watch the Sapphire Sandwich because not only does it have the front Sapphire Crystal, it also has a see-through Sapphire case back where you can see that manual chronograph movement in all its glory. I personally would opt for the Sapphire Sandwich just because I'm much more likely to scratch a watch than I am to go to the moon. This watch is 42 millimeters and the largest out of the three. It is a very, very true tool watch though. This wasn't a clever product placement by Omega. This was the watch that NASA needed to go to space. My boy Buzz used this thing, right? So it does have a tachymeter scale on the outside. Again, it is a chronograph with a stopwatch function. Very usable tool watch. 
I personally like these on a NATO or leather strap, but you really can't go wrong with any combination of this watch. I will note that it is not COSC certified or a chronometer uh, like the other two watches. However, it does have a very classic movement, so it's really more about being a replica of an icon than it is to break any new records in terms of performance or accuracy. Last but not least is the Rolex Explorer. It's definitely not last in terms of price. Coming in at 6,550 US, it is the most expensive of the three. This modern 39 millimeter Rolex pays tribute to the classic Rolex Explorer and its simple, timeless black 369 dial design that's been adored by watch lovers for decades. Out of the three watches, this is definitely the most everyday watch and probably the best if you're just gonna have one watch in your collection. First, the 39 millimeter size and black dial just wear and go with everything. Second, it's not just all about style and size. This is the most robust watch out of the three. This is an explorer after all. These were watches that were used to trek across deserts and climb mountains. It has 100 meters of water resistance and is made with Rolex 904L stainless steel that could take a beating and will age really well over a lifetime. While it's not as accurate as the Seiko Spring Drive, it is a chronometer and COSC certified at plus or minus two seconds a day, so you also have a really accurate workhorse of a watch. Out of the bracelets, I'd say it's by far the best out of the three. The Oyster bracelet, just classic in design, incredibly comfortable. That 904L steel again, but it also has a five millimeter adjustment in it so you could let the watch out on a hot day, which any watch around $6,000 should have in my opinion. Okay, so that's all three watches. This is a showdown. We have to pick a winner, right? Uh, but I don't know. They're, they're all so great. Can you guys pick one? Tell me in the comments what you think is best. Um, but seriously, it is really hard to pick, but I am leaning towards the Moonwatch, and really not because it's better than the other two watches. It just fits in my collection more and checks a lot of boxes that I don't have in my collection. First, I think the watch looks great on the leather strap. I showed it on the steel in the video just because I wanted to have it comparable to the other two watches. Um, also, I don't have a chronograph in my collection, so that checks another box there. The see-through case back is really great with the mechanical movement, the hand-wound movement. You see the whole thing. Automatic movement watches are cool with the see-through case back as well, but the rotor blocks a lot of the stuff, and it's really nice to just see all those parts. I think it's really neat. So yes, I'm leaning towards the Moonwatch, but that's really only because I don't have a Moonwatch or anything similar to it, and I have watches that are similar to the Explorer. I mean, I have an Explorer too. However, the Grand Seiko, the price and the finish on that watch is, is really hard to ignore. So it's probably close second, the Grand Seiko, and then right behind it, uh, I mean, this is a photo finish, the three, the Explorer, but probably only because I already have an Explorer too. That might be first if I, if I didn't have it. Great classic watch. Again, let me know what you think in the comments. This is a super new channel. We've been up for only two weeks, actually less than two weeks. So please comment, like, subscribe, and we'll do more watch reviews. And thank you for watching.